can still see Mount Hood. Jefferson, just the top of Washington, nothing on, on Three Fingers Jack. The Valley, Sisters, camp right now, but Smith Rock is over there. I have to tell you, this is so freaking fantastic. These are moments that you live for. That you go through all the difficulties. This is why. Standing here right now in here, amongst this beauty is just breathtaking. Do you agree, Susan? I agree. She agrees. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and just do it. Because this is what it's all about. Wow. I know not everybody can come up here. Not everybody can do this. I understand that. And maybe that's the, that's a good thing. Maybe it's all of us shouldn't end up here. That's why we're videoing this. That's why we want to share this with you. But I have to tell you that it's just amazing to be here. It really puts you in the in your place as it were. Nature is just amazing and powerful. This is a crater from a steam vent. When Yampuya, which we're going to go to, erupted, there were steam vents, two of them. And there was just tremendous amount of steam, pressure being released, and all this ash was blown up into the up into the atmosphere and it landed here, it rained down like rain, just depended on which way the wind was blowing as to how it piled up. But big rocks, lots of little rocks, just raining down rock, amazing. That's, we just came down that. <laughs> we just came down that. That's a cornice. That's what that's known as. You might call it a snow drift, but it's called a cornice. And we see evidence of a avalanche coming off of Yampuya down there built up. Wasn't a huge one. It came right down from there. Note the trees that are laying down and the particular shape of the snow. And I was just telling Susan, if we were able to walk down there, if we, were, if we chose to walk down there, the snow would be rock hard. Those trees, note the trees on this, on, uh, this uh, slope here. They're not very big. Well, yeah, every once in a while they go through a little bit of a you don't belong here because the snow takes over and just wipes you out. So we're at the saddle between this ridge and Yampuya. We will make our way up that trail that's very, very faint trail. We'll make our way up that trail and get up on top. This is living life to its fullest. 
As far as we're concerned, this is the type of things we seek out. The moments that we feel the most alive. And in the end, we want memories, not dreams. Some people call that rock mass in the center of Yampuya the plug. They feel like that's what plugged the volcano and then everything flowed off the other side, which we'll see in a little bit. I'm not so sure that the lava actually got up that high. That uh, this obviously when it erupted, there was a lot of material coming out of here. Uh, ash being blown out. All the material we're standing on obviously came out of this volcano. But the lava never got out, the, came out the top. And I'll show you where the lava came out. This little draw right here is most probably just because the wind never really blew in that direction. It was blowing that way, it was blowing that way, and it was blowing this way. And as the lava is, the ash is coming out, the wind blows it, and that's the direction it piles up. So we'll get around to the other side and we'll take a peek at where the lava actually came out. We're up on Yampuya, the Sisters Wilderness. What's the date today, Susan? June something. June 23rd or 24th? 23rd? Okay, here we are. So that mountain that you see in the background there, that's the brother, or excuse me, that's the husband. And we were on the other side of that at Separation Point last weekend. So here we are on this side now. It is quite windy, but uh, we're doing the best we can. And this is where the lava came out of Yampuya. You can see the flow. It broke out and flooded this whole area. That's all lava from Liampuya. Going all the way out there, all the way down to the road and beyond. Down this way. All those pressure ridges. That's all lava from here. It's amazing. You can see the plug as as it's referred to. This uh don't quote me, but I think this was 1700 years ago this erupted. This is the last eruption in the Sisters was this volcano right here. Obviously not a big one. But the most recent. Native Americans were here, living here, when this took place. I'm sure they would have some stories to tell. Going down the back side of Yampuya Switchback Trail. Out of the wind here quite a bit warmer you know might even call it pleasant all part of the journey
did someone say snowdrift? <laughs> Look at this. Here's here's the trail. There's 10 feet of snow on the trail. Huge snowdrift. Well, this is an interesting spot because this is where the lava came out of Yampuya. This is where the cone fractured and the lava started pouring out. We'll see if we can't get a better view of it here for you. But there are lava trails leaving this spot. So the lava came up into the cone and you can see right over here, there's a part of an old lava tube. See that? Sketchy coming through here. So the lava just poured out of here. And this is part of an old lava tube that's been filled in. But you can see right there, this is the what was the exit of the lava. And it just poured out of here, a river of lava pouring out, heading down that way. And then as it solidifies, as things cool, look at this here, see? Another part of the lava tube. But as things cooled and solidified, the lava was redirected and it just slowly poured out over the land and then slowly cooled and it came to an end as the pressure was released. But a fair amount of material came through here. This would have been hell on earth at that time. And you can see Yampuya is, I don't know, 300 feet above us. So this is where it all made its, its way out. This cone is just ash. And that's why it couldn't take the pressure of all that lava in there. So that ash cone just, a hole got punched in it. The lava started pouring out, releasing the pressure. And that was the end of it, the beginning of the end. The last remnant of the pressure underneath the sisters. This is where it ended up. All the volcanoes along the Cascades are from subduction. We're about, oh, 150, 170 miles from the coast. The subduction don't, zone may be, oh, 200 miles. So what was the Landa, Wanda Fuca plate was subducted underneath the North American plate. The material went down, heated up, is quite a bit more buoyant than the lava, the magma around it. So it made its way back up to the surface and boom, volcano, boom, volcano. Continent building. All those mountains down there, those were all volcanoes. Oregon has had two very distinct volcanic periods. One very old and one relatively new. It's an interesting uh, thing. Oregon is unique in that sense. Not a lot of places have had two distinct volcanic periods. And there's uh, lots of debate on why. But, wow, I see the remnants of a, uh, yeah, I see the remnants of a uh, avalanche. This is what a, the remnants of an avalanche looks like. Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> yeah, this is another day you wouldn't want to be here. The snow came down off Yampuya. Look at broken trees. That's what it's all about right there. I think that's a fairly common occurrence here on Yampuya. Just a little just a little tiny avalanche.
just enough to strip off the branches and break a few trees pile up not very far I think we'll go down we'll try not to follow the trail too much we'll go down a little bit Yeah. Broken branches. The snow here is quite a bit more firm. Oh, look at Susan with her kick step. Go, girl, go. She's got her kick step going for her. She's a mountaineering woman. Look at her just maneuver that. Oh, how nice. Oh, 